their minds, oh God. You begin to restore their faith. You're restoring in this house. And we believe that you're manifesting right now, oh God. Lord, we know that you are restoring God. Lord, we thank you because you're looking over our pastor right now, oh God. Lord, we just want to thank you because he's out the hospital, oh God. Lord, we just ask you to send a fresh aroma right there, oh God, in his home, oh God. Let him know that you're still working in his favor right now. And we claim it in the mighty name of Jesus. And not only him, oh God, that you're working on his family, oh God. Cover them, oh God, by the blood of the Lamb, oh God. We thank you for him right now, oh God. We thank you for our pastor and first lady. Thank you, Jesus. And not only that, oh God, we pray right now that you touch this sanctuary, oh God. Move from heart to heart, oh God. Send overflow, oh God. Send your angels over this place, oh God. Lord, protect us right now, oh God. Lord, we ask you right now to pour out of heaven right now. That you pour out miracles, signs, and wonders, oh God. Lord, we pray that you send your anointing down on this house, oh God. That your favor will begin to manifest itself, oh God. Lord, we're praying for every teacher, oh God. Every principal, oh God. We ask that you go into the schools, oh God. We, we bind that demonic force of killing, oh God. We, we bind the enemy, oh God. All this senseless killing, oh God. We bind it in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we know that you are protected, oh God. But you have been protecting us all week long. And because you've been protecting us, God, we want to bless your holy name. We want to bless your holy name. We want to give you glory in this place. We want to shout. We want to just shout in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah in this place, oh God. Hallelujah in this place. Lord, you've done so much. Hallelujah in this place. Hallelujah in this place. I feel your power in this place. Hallelujah in this place. I feel your fresh. I feel a fresh wind in this place. Hallelujah in this place. Lord, I thank you for this choir and this great scene, oh God. That they'll be continuing to sing of the anointings in the power of the Holy Ghost of God. We thank you for the praise team. And we thank you for the people that's on this way, oh God. Lord, we ask you to protect them and bring them on in your safe, oh God. And Lord, we pray right now that you'll touch the man that's going to bring the word. And Lord, we ask you to give him wisdom and knowledge to bring forth to the people, oh God. We just thank you for him to be here right now, oh God. Lord, we just ask you to send the word from him, oh God. Lord, send the word right now, oh God. We need a word from heaven, oh God. And Lord, we ask that you speak through him, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, the lives will be changed, oh God. That the minds will be changed, oh God. That the hearts will be conflicted, oh God. From the word that came forth. And we'll begin to just give you honor and praise in this place. In Jesus' name, we lift you up and we shout. Glory. 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 I need two or three women that say glory. Oh, my God. 
one job, and what is that? What do we to do what? To worship. Come on. So if you will head to lift it all over the sanctuary. If you know that that is your job, when we go to our nine to fives or our eight to fives during the week, we have our job and we, we go to our, our station and we do our job, right? So that means when we come into the house of God, our job is to worship. Not just in here, but all, all day and all week, but specifically in this sanctuary. Come on. And this is just a beauty, but the sanctuary is in us. Amen. So if you want to slip up your hands and just begin to worship God right where you sit. Ah, just tell him, thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for being, being uh, using me as a vessel. God, I thank you for strength. I thank you for patience, for guidance. God, I thank you for my sanity. God, I thank you for being a sustainer. God, we thank you for all things. Glory. Hallelujah. We're just grateful on this morning. We're grateful on our one time. Say, God, I thank you. God, we will never ask. We won't ask you anything before we tell you thank you for what you've already done. God, it's been more than enough. It's been more than enough.
your bed and he could have went around you and went to somebody's house else home and woke them up put food on their table put raiment on their back gave them a portion of their help and strength and could have left you lying in a bed waiting on somebody else to come move your steel body but somebody shout What I need, y'all gotta forgive me. Y'all gotta forgive me, but when I when I think about the goodness of Jesus and uh, all that He's done for me, I can't help but tell Him, thank you, Lord. Listen, if God ain't here, nothing for you. I just want you to sit still. If God ain't never put food on your table, just sit there. If God ain't ever healed your body when Tylenol couldn't do it, when Benadryl couldn't do it, when chemotherapy couldn't do it.
he's, he's wanting to get out. I promise you, if he could be here, he would be here. Um, but I, 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 I would like to admonish the body. Y'all keep on praying for Master. So that when he, when he mounts this roster again, yes. that the devil in hell is going to lose to the people. Let me see if I can get some more help out there. The next time the pastor mounts this roster, at least three people are going to be healed. The next time the pastor mounts this roster, at least one marriage shall come to reconciliation. We speak that according to the word of God. I'm ready to assure, amen. Uh, and to you, my father's children, it's good for us to be here. Uh, to this praise team that literally ushered us into the presence right. of the Almighty God. Y'all come on with me. Right. 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 Um, I'm Pastor Edgar Scarlock from the Great New Bible Church in the big city of Lambert, Mississippi. Uh, and we are thankful for this preaching opportunity uh, that Pastor Lashur has afforded us. So with that being said, I'm going to shut up introducing me and just preach. Okay. Amen. Jonah chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3. Amen. We're going to look at uh, verse 1 through 8. Jonah chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. When you have it, say amen. Amen. Jonah chapter 3, uh, verse 1 through 8. This and the word of Jehovah came unto Jonah. personal testimony of a young man that said that he was reading a book and there was a man walking through an elephant camp and he spotted the elephants weren't being kept in cages or held by the use of chains. All of that was holding them back from escaping the camp was a small piece of rope that was tied to their legs. 
as the man gazed upon the elephants, he was completely confused as to why the elephants who were bigger in stature, who had more strength and ability to be able to break free of the confines that they were restricted by, he was wondering why the elephants did not attempt to run away. They could have easily just went out the gate and no one could have stopped them. The curious young man wanting to know the answer asked the trainer nearby while the elephants were just standing there and never tried to escape. The trainer replied, when they were very young and much smaller in size and stature, they used the same size rope to tie them and to keep them tied down. As they grew up, they are conditioned to believe that they cannot break away. Mm -hmm. Somebody gonna catch me on this. They believe that the same little rope that's been tied to them their whole entire lives have now been able to keep them from breaking free. The only reason that the elephants weren't breaking free and escaping from the camp was that over time they adopted the belief that it just was not possible. I, I need to talk to somebody up in this place that you've been wrestling and dealing with some generational curses that people have tagged to your bloodline. You know, they say that everything in your bloodline from your great-great-grandmother to your great niece ain't nothing but low down and got nothing going. Everything is all jacked up. Everything in the family is either insane and cannot go anywhere. Won't nobody ever have any finances. Matter of fact, grandmama didn't have no money. Dad is struggling. Dad and mama, nephew, niece, and everybody in the bloodline is struggling. And now here it is. You wake up every morning with the same echoes going on in your head. That yes, everybody in your family been struggling, but I want to speak today that somebody is going to leave here saying, you know what? Enough Yes, sir, is enough. The last curse has been broken. Oh, listen, I need for somebody to just look at your neighbor and say, break the loose. No, y'all got to say it again. Look at your neighbor and say, break loose. I need for somebody to understand that just because it's been does not mean it has to remain. Let me say it again. Just because it has been does not mean it has to be. Let me say this one more time. Just because they said it don't mean it has to be true. Just because they said it don't mean it has to be true. Just because they said that you won't have anything does not mean you don't have to have anything. I need for somebody to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor I'm going to defy the odds. I am mighty afraid that the universal church, that the world church is in a spiritual struggle and slowly losing its God-given grip to reign due to generational struggles and strongholds that have become embedded into the mind of the believer. Have y'all noticed now that all of a sudden here we are about 20 months later after dealing with this monster call and I'm tired of calling its name. I'm I'm just gonna say, I'm just, I'm like Papa. I done had all eyes can take and I can't take no more. I'm sick and tired of every time I turn on the news. They're telling me, here come another barrier. I'm sick and tired of every time I turn around. They're telling me, put on a mask, take off a mask. They're telling me, get back to me. They're telling me, don't get back to me. I'm just sick and tired. They keep on changing the narrative now, telling us this and telling us that. But after all of this, we're still going to grocery store. Yeah. We're still going yeah. to this, sir. We're still going to club. Yeah. Somebody will have to talk back to me up in here. We're still going to work. Yeah. And then we're trying to work overtime to catch up on the time that yeah. we lost. We were one here at work. But now when we come to church, we got folk that are packing out football stadium with record numbers who are still afraid to come and sit in the sanctuary yeah. because we believe that it'll get us into church but it won't get us into the football stadium. We believe 
believe it's going to get us in the sanctuary, but it won't get us on our line in Walmart. I need for somebody to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor enough is enough. Here we are, here we are, here we are. Now we're still dealing with issues where politicians can't come together to agree for the best need of everybody. You know, you got some people that are saying that we need to give. We got other people saying we don't need to give. We have some politicians saying that we need to put forth new gun laws. And we got other politicians saying we need to impose harsher criminals. Because I would like to suggest, before they go back into another chamber to come up with another law, look at who's committing the crime. All right. And just going to go preach this and he's going back, back, back down south. Uh, 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 laws are being broken by people who are not respectful of the law. Of the law. Right. That's right. So as they are going back in chambers and they're discussing trying to put forth new laws, only thing you're going to do is give the common criminal another law to break. <laughs> law abiding citizens are not running around causing all of this havoc and all of this crime. We're just trying to make sense of stuff that just don't make sense. Make no sense. Just don't make sense to me how a child can leave home and have a gun in their backpack and shoot up a whole school. Don't make sense to me how somebody can walk into a sanctuary of people who are lifting up holy hands just to say, God, I love you, and they can gun down folk in the sanctuary. It don't make sense to me how people can come to church, treat one another real bad, speak in tongue, walk out the door, and cut somebody out in normal. It don't make sense to me how love can disrespect life. It don't make sense to me. Oh, why is can disrespect husband? It don't make sense to me how you can feed a child from age born to 19 and that child turn around and tell you that you ain't never did nothing for them. It don't make sense to me. Hey. And I would like to suggest that we have to break the curses that are going on in and around our thought patterns. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, break that curse, break that curse. Hey. One thing that the church of old used to love was the fellowship and coming together. Mm -hmm. You know, they used to love coming together and, 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 and singing Zion songs, but now the fellows come to church and don't like the fellows on the ship. <laughs> Let me say this one more time. We come to church and we treat one another mighty bad because somebody don't dress the way you dress. Somebody don't dance the way you dance. Somebody don't, don't matter of fact, I need for somebody to stop looking at the tattoos somebody have on and start looking at the character that they have in them. Lord have mercy. Look at your neighbor and say, give them a chance to. Paul was trying to compel the Jews and the Gentiles to appreciate the uniqueness of God's oneness. That's why he said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. You know, he said, I can do all things through Christ, hmm, which strengthens me. Uh, I need for somebody to understand that when the universal church comes together, then we have the mindset of one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Uh, I need for somebody to understand that Paul wants to convey to the church at Ephesus that God wants to diminish the, the diluted dilemma of Jews versus Gentiles by showing them how Christ came and united us. Somebody shout, united us. Yeah. Romans 10 and 9 says, but if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And when he united us, then he unified us. Somebody shout, he unified us. Yeah. That's why the question was asked, how can two walk together lest they agree? Listen, you can't shout hallelujah with your fellow parishioners, but then when you're playing spades, you're talking them down with people who don't even go to church. Lord, somebody gonna have to help me out of it here. Look at your neighbor and shout, we are united and we are unified. But then after he unites us and then he unifies us, but then ultimately he wants to utilize us. Somebody shout, God wants to use me. As messed up as I 
am at some time bad attitude that I have. At some time, I don't know whether or not I'm happy or if I'm sad. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm saved. Then sometimes I feel like I'm slipping back into sin. Sometimes I want to shout hallelujah. Sometimes I want to say, I ain't got nothing to say. But God ultimately wants to use us. That's why he wants us to understand that when we become a part of the body of Christ, he said, listen, have the understanding you can do all things through Christ. Which strengthens me. I need for that individual that's been told the truth about yourself. And it was kind of hard for you to accept. Yes, let's be honest. There are some folk that got some bad attitude, but you still anointed. There are some folk that got some struggles in their rug, in their carpet, but they still anointed. There are some people you had some major fall in your faith, but you're still, look at your neighbor's shot, I'm still anointed. Yeah, I know folk want to cast me out because of what happened, but I need for somebody to understand that God is not holding over you the thing that you did because he's too busy looking at the thing that you're getting ready to do. The thing that you did represented your past. The thing that you're getting ready to do represents your future. The thing that you did is attached to your flesh, but the thing that you're getting ready to do is attached to your favor. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm walking in my favor. Uh, Jonah, Jonah, y'all, y'all, y'all do know the backdrop of this text. Jonah has tried to run from what God has called him to do. I want to talk, I want to talk to the to, to the lazy boy saints who says that serving God comes without frustration. I need, I need for you to understand that when you really get into a true relationship and a workmanship with God, you really find out what you can and what you can't take. If your relationship with God is on easy all the time, I would like to suggest that maybe it's not a relationship. Maybe you just relating. Because when you are in a relationship with God, it's just like being in a relationship with a child to a parent. Sometimes the parent tells the child to do something. The child really don't want to do it. But because of the love and the respect that the child has for the parent, that child knows to respect that parent and do what that parent has told them to do. And that's how our relationship is with God. Sometimes God tells us to do things that we really just don't want to do. Think about it. When Jesus was preaching on the mountain, he tells them. Y'all remember when he was preaching on the Beatitudes? He tells us things that are kind of like backwards to me because he tells us, happy are they which mourn and hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Happy are the sons of God, for they shall be called the peacemakers. Look at this. Have you noticed God tell us to be happy about stuff that ain't really happy? He tell us to do good to those that despitefully misuse us. That ain't always happy news, but when we do it the way God tells us to do it, he'll make a way out of no way. Jonah has been told by God, go down to Nineveh. I need for you to preach against this great city. Now, for those of us who don't understand how what the severity in this text is, we have to understand that Jonah has seen his forefathers mistreated by the Ninevites. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Jonah has seen women in his family misused, abused. Jonah has seen family members mistreated. Jonah has seen friends mistreated. And now God wants him to go down and talk to a group of people who he really don't care for. Uh, I need to just ask somebody this question. How many times have you found yourself meeting somebody down the aisle that you really didn't care for? And you really wanted to say, I don't like you, but go out of your mouth came, hello, how you doing? That's how you know God still got his hands on you. When you wanted to put somebody in a bad way, but you blessed them in a happy way. When you wanted to tell somebody off, but you lifted them up in prayer. That's you know that God still has his hands on you. And here we find that Jonah has been called by God to go down and preach to these people. He tells them to go and tell them that God loves them. My God, look what Jonah does. Jonah said, I tell you what, I'm going to go, but I'm not going there. 
anybody that has followed this text, anybody that has followed this preaching and this teaching, we do know that Jonah decides that he will go down to the shipyard, but he would get a ship ride to Tarsus, to another place. Look what happened while he is in travel route. Y'all do know that Jonah has to get off the ship. I, I need to talk to three people up in here. The reason why things are rocky in your life right now is not that God is trying to kill you, but he's trying to save you. The reason why God is allowing some folk that you've been cool with, now y'all ain't fool with each other no more. The reason is because God is trying to deliver you from people and things that have been holding you back and down. And God knows that if he gave you the option, if you'll make them your best friends. But God said, if I allow them to remain your best friends, they're going to become a part of your biggest problems. So sometimes God has to deliver us from our best friends in order for us to get away from our biggest problems. Lord have mercy. I just saw some situations in my life. Anybody up in here ever had somebody in your life that you thought was your BFF? You thought was your, oh come on up in here, was your everything and when you read the text, when you saw the post, you come to find out that they've been nothing but a hater unaware. You come to find out that they've really been jealous of what God had going on in your life. And let's be honest, you want to go right back on on social media. You want to hit the yeah. air. You want to reply back out of your flesh. But I just want to convey to somebody up in here. Stop fighting your battles. Yeah. On social media. And start fighting your battles down on your knees in prayer. You can talk all day long on social media. But do I have anybody up in here that's from the old school church just to talk with Jesus? Lord, I feel just like it's Sunday morning up in here. We'll make things Listen, I need for three people that'll just raise your hand and say, God, deliver me from people who don't like me as a person. Deliver me from people who don't respect my personality. Deliver me from people who would rather see me cry in the living. Deliver me from people who don't want to see me advancing but want to see me going back. Somebody shout, deliver me from people. God has prepared a great fish. God has prepared a great fish. For those of us who, who don't understand the sovereignty of God, uh, there are some people that wish death upon you, but even in your bad situation, God has made a way of escape for you. Because Jonah, when he was thrown out, look what God could have orchestrated. God could have called a great white shark to come catch him. But if the great white shark would have caught him because of its taste for blood, Jonah would have been consumed and eaten. But because God had already made a way of escape for Jonah, the thing that caught him when he failed didn't have an appetite for him. There's somebody up in here right now, you falling, and you better thank God that you fail when you fail because there's some folk that see you fall, but they really don't have an appetite for you. They too busy talking about other stuff, and at the same time, God is preserving you. Look at your neighbor and say, thank God he's preserving me. Look at your neighbor and say, thank God he's preserving me. Jonah has a talk with God while he is in the bottom of the great fish at the bottom of the ocean. Look what happens when he has finished convening, talking with God. Now the great fish comes up close enough. And I'm going to find, I ought to have my three people that are staying and almost lose your mind right here. All right. God causes the great fish to get close enough to the bank that when he spits him out, he doesn't have to spend time trying to tread water to get to solid ground. But what God did was God made that that was holding him release him. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor God get ready to release you. No, y'all ain't talking to the right person. Talk to the other person. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God get ready to release you. Into 
one day. Did you really want to tell when somebody is taking advantage of a second chance? It's when they ain't got time to waste. Oh, I need for somebody to look at your neighbor and say, baby, I ain't got time to waste no more. I ain't got time to communicate about the in gossip conversation. I ain't got time to sit about and sit back and worry about who what somebody else wearing, what somebody else driving, how somebody else living, how somebody else giving. I ain't got time to sit back and worry about that type of stuff. I'm too busy trying to make a better chance out of this next chance. Because the first time I messed it up, look at your neighbor and say, I ain't gonna mess this chance up. Look at your neighbor and say, I ain't gonna mess this chance up. Lord God, some of y'all ain't talking to the right people. Talk to the right person if you gotta scream over the next person. But look at him and say, I ain't gonna mess this chance up. Man, God done gave me a better job. Matter of fact, he done gave me another job. And now on my first job, I wasn't tithing. But now I got a clean bathroom for less than what I made. I wasn't tithing for my first check. But in this next season of my life, I'm tithing every time I get a chance. Look at your neighbor and say, I ain't going to mess this chance up. Matter of fact, I need for somebody to look at your neighbor and say, listen, the last time I hooked and connected up with people who were bad character messed up, but listen, in this next season, I'm going to connect myself with people that have light spirit, that have light sacrifice, that want to do the same thing that I want to do. Look at your neighbor and say, I ain't going to mess this chance up. Matter of fact, I need for somebody to look at your neighbor and say, next time you see me running away from a crowd, it's not because I'm scared, but it's because I see purpose in my future. The next time you see me saying no to the invitation, it's not because I didn't want to go. I really wanted to go. But I look at what God has in store for me. And I can't commit myself to every crowd. I can't say yes to every invitation. I can't be at everybody convey. Look at your neighbors and I ain't gonna mess this thing up. God, give me three more minutes and I'm out here. Now we find Jonah. God gives him the word again. Look at your neighbor and say, he gives him the word again. This is what I love about God. God is not like our, our friends. Our friends, when we make them mad, they don't talk to us anymore. With God, even when we make him mad, he still talk to us. Right here, in verse number one, verse number one, it says, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, he said, he said, listen, Jonah, you didn't hear me the first time. But I, I'm still going to talk to you again. Uh, I'm, I'm talking to some folk right now that you told God, God, if you'll get me out of this situation, I won't do it again. And here it is, this is your ninth time saying you won't do it again. But did he wake you up this morning? Did he put food on the table? Did he give you strength and ability? It's because that in spite of your brokenness, God still gives you communication. He tells him, he tells him, he said, listen, now I need for you to go, go on down there and do what I told you to do, son. And this is what I love about this text. When Jonah gets to the city, he does what God tells him to do. Three points and I'm out of here. First thing, in order for us to get it right. First thing we have to understand is there must be convicted hearts. Somebody shout convicted hearts. Because verse 5 it says, and the people of Nineveh believed God. The people of Nineveh believed God. Whenever I say something repetitiously, it's because there's a point I'm trying to nail on. It says, and the people of God, and the people of Nineveh believed God. Uh, and the people of Nineveh who were not believers hmm, right. believed God. Right. If the people of Nineveh who were not believers turn around and believe God, when are we who are of the household of faith? All right, all right, all right, all right. Who we believe God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lead not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct thy path. And even when sometimes, when it seems like situations have gotten rocky, don't you dare 
Don't you dare give up. Hang on off in there because Galatians 6 and 9 says, Be not weary and well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we think not. The reason why I have not given up is because I, God has brought me too far for me to turn around now. I'm not going to give up because He's brought me too far. If I was going to give up, it should have been on my first step. But now I done made my third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. I ain't got time to give up now. Look at your neighbor and say, You can't give up now. To get this thing together, if we're going to make this thing right, we have to have convicted hearts. It shows right here that the people's hearts were convicted because verse 5, and the people of Nineveh believed God and they proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. I need for folk to stop blaming all of our stuff on the White House and take ownership for your house. I, need, I just need about three more people that'll clap or just say amen right there. We put everything on Joe Biden and Trump and Harris and Pence and, and, and all them, the Congress, uh, the, the, the House of Representatives. We put every, on the Senate, we put everything on the White House. But when are we going to start having ownership for our house? All right. All right. What happened to the day when parents used to tell their children before they left home to go to school? Get in the classroom. Sit down. Oh yeah, make sure you pray. Make sure you pray. But but you better get in the classroom and sit down. Don't let me get a phone call. Don't let me have to come down to the school. But now, cheering, come home with half stories. With edited phone videos. And parents come to school ready to fight. And cuss. And disrupt the educational system and process for our young babies. Y'all ain't gonna say amen up in here. When are we gonna start saying, hold up, I tell you what, if you get in trouble at school, you better make sure you, you get ready for a whooping when you get home. Anybody from that day and time? Anybody remember that matter of fact, if you got a whooping at school nine times out of ten, the bus driver knew about it. When you got on the bus, and when you got ready to get on the bus, Miss Johnson's gonna get you when you get home. By the time you got home, everybody on the bus was laughing and playing. You were too busy looking in the window saying, I wonder how they gonna beat me when I get home. When you got off the bus, mama was already in the door with her arm folded. And she was not saying, Lord, have mercy on me. She was saying, Lord, have mercy on what I'm getting ready to do to them. All right. Yes, Lord. There has to be some convicted hearts. Yeah, we have people that are doing heinous crime. But I want to ask the question, when are we as the body of Christ going to start back praying a little bit more? Right. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 said, if my people... Yeah, would you call on my name to humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways? Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I just believe that even if God can't save the White House, he ought to be able to save my house. And if he saved my house, because of the prayer that are coming out of my house, they ought to affect what happens in the White House. So we ought to have convicted hearts, but then we need to have commitment to holiness. Somebody shout commitment to holiness. Because verse 6, verse 6, two more minutes and I'm through. Verse 6, and the tidings reached the king of Nineveh. The king of Nineveh, when he, when he heard about what was going on, when the king heard, when the king heard, how did the king hear? Only way the king could have heard about the message that was preached is because somebody that was at the prayer meeting uh -huh. Uh -huh. took it right. to somebody else. Yeah. And then somebody else took it to somebody else. Oh, yeah. And then somebody else took it to somebody else. Oh, no. All right. Three, two, one. Have you noticed? If you put on social media, Three people get saved this morning. You will have four likes and one share. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's right, that's right. But let somebody stand up and cuss me out right now. <laughs> somebody bring up their technological device called a messy phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Video it, mm. upload it, mm -hmm. and the only thing they did was just put it on social media. 
by 715 tonight is viral with over 976,000 views over 475 shares but won't nobody share the good news of Jesus what's the good news of Jesus somebody want to know what the good news of Jesus is he was born of a virgin yeah he was crucified on an old rugged cross they brought his body down put him in a barber tomb stayed in the tomb three days I don't care if it was Saturday Sunday Monday or Tuesday when he got up only thing I do know is an empty tomb is there to prove that he didn't get up So we got to start sharing more of what happens in the kingdom. Share with somebody that was once a sinner, now they're saved. Share that somebody was once sick, now they're healed. Share that some family that was on the verge of breaking up, now they're on the verge of let's get back together. Share with somebody that was battling cancer, but because of the healing power of God, Jehovah, now they are healed. Look at your neighbor and shout, we got to share the holiness. Y'all do remember, y'all do remember that when Job was going through his dilemma, uh -huh. Job had lost his position. Yes, did. Job had lost his persuasion in the, in, in, the, in the government. But one thing Job didn't lose, he didn't lose his praise. Uh -huh. Y'all remember it said that Job arose, rent his robe, and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and said, Naked came out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Bless it. Somebody shout in spite of it all, I'm still going to praise it. All right. yes, sir. So if we're going to get this thing together, we have to have convicted hearts. We have to have commitment to holiness. But then we need to have change of habits. Somebody shout, we need to have change of habits. Because right there, verse number seven, it says, And he made proclamation and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything, let them not feed nor drink water. Mm -hmm. And what the king was saying was, in order for us to see God change, yes, our situation, we got to first of all change our motivation. We can't think the same way. We can't live the same old way. We can't do people the same way we used to do them. But we got to change the way we do things. If there ain't anybody in here that's saying, Lord, not only change my financial status, but say, Lord, change my heart. Let me make sure I think right so that I can live right. And when we have a change of habits, sometimes we got to be faithful, even when it looks like it ain't going to be fruitful. Because first number eight says, but let them be covered with sackcloth, both man and beast, and let them cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way, and let the violence that is in his hand be from him. If there anybody in him that say, Lord, enough is enough. God. Yes, sir. I'm ready to get some things together. I'm ready to get my marriage together. I'm ready to get my children together. I'm ready to get my brains together. We pray to go up. Yeah. Blessings come down If you're in the body in here And you look at your neighbor You can elbow bump them You can fist bump them You can grab them by the hand And rock them and shake them Shake them and rock them Rock them and shake them Shake them and rock them And say neighbor We gotta get it together We gotta love the Lord Stand on your feet, 
The curse is broken off my family. Starting with me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my family money is no longer funny. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my family health is no longer sick. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm messing around with all my time, but I gotta get out of here. Somebody say, neighbor, I'm no longer confused. Say, neighbor, I'm no longer bewildered. Say, neighbor, I'm no longer let down. But because I believe God, I trust his word. If he said it, I believe it. And I believe I'm the head and not the tail. I believe I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I believe I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I believe I'm a lender and not a borrower. I believe. I should leave and I die. I believe the best is yet to come. I believe the greater is in front of me. I believe generation after generation is blessed because of me. I believe my pastor is healed. I believe my pastor's restored. I believe I got all power. I got all persuasion and I believe uh, pastor makes it very clear God is always speaking yeah. but do you have an ear yeah. to hear what thus says the Lord yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. the hand of God be with you this morning we pray we pray that our pastor will continue to recover and we'll be back on the stuff before we know it yeah. <laughs> praise the Lord we're going to go ahead here now and, and open the door of the church is there anyone who wants to draw closer to the Lord? Amen. Is there anyone who wants to confess and give their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning? Now's a good time. You know what? How about we all just stand? Praise the Lord. And we're going to pray a word over you in the name of Jesus very quickly. That this word delivered this morning will not fall on deaf ears. But this is a good word. Praise the Lord. this morning in the name of Jesus over your people. Lord God, we lift up past the first lady this morning, Lord God, and you, G, and every person who calls on the name of Jesus. Lord God, help us to keep it together. Father, we pray this morning that your word will settle in our hearts, that we will live, be, and do according to the will of God. Father, grant it for us, we pray. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you now. Amen. 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 Amen.
come here now. We're going to go ahead and give our offering. Praise the Lord. We're not going to rob God, are we? Now, so I was glad that you mentioned that this morning. Praise the Lord. We're not going to rob the Lord. Because the Lord has taught me that nobody can treat you better than he can. Amen. I really, Sister Free, found that out when I was in the hospital over a month ago. And the doctor did all he could. But God did more than the doctor. He said, it's time for you to get up and go back home. So, so I need the Lord to hear me when I call on you. You know what? I can love the Lord to look at the fact that I am not tied to you. That I am not giving my offering to you. Amen. Let us stand. That's why we're going to make our service. Come on, uh, Brother Tom. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. They will accommodate you. Follow the, the procedure that we normally uh, use here in New York. We're going to start with this uh, the, the side going on that. If you will, please stand.
get in trouble because I love this brother. I don't care if he tell y'all I'm good. All right, all right. If he if he can't walk in here, if he can't walk in here, don't allow him to live in here. Let me say this again. If he cannot walk in here, don't allow him to limp in here. Now y'all make sure y'all take care of my friend. Take care of my brother. Uh, 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 sisters, y'all make sure y'all check on Lady Lashur. Uh, she is being there and, and, and being there for his aid. And, and she needs someone that's going to be a constant encouragement even unto her. Yes, Lord. Amen. So, and we're going to continue to lift this Genesis family up that God will keep you all and restore and bring even greater even as you all have already seen. 2022, let's not focus on 2022. Let's thank God that we're going to finish 2021. Yes. Yes. That's a good song to leave here with today. It's going to be, look at your neighbor, we're standing all over this place. Tell them and say, it's going to be, it's about to be me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Tell them, tell them, tell them with a confidence. Tell them, say, it's about to be me. Tell them, say, you just don't know what's about to happen in your life. It's about to be me. Father, we thank you now for this chance again that you afforded us to worship together in the beauty of holiness. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to call on your God and Son, Jesus. Now, Father, as we leave down from this place, never from thine presence, but always depending upon thine protection and expecting thine provision, we pray that you would keep us safe as well as faultless and from falling. And Lord, we ask that you will continually to add increase to this ministry. Continue to bless Pastor Lashura, encourage Lady Lashura, and we'll be ever so careful to give your name the honor, the praise, and the glory. Allow no one to suffer because of the demon or lack because of their giving today, but allow every person to live out of increase and more than enough. We ask all of these things in thy son Jesus' name. Amen and thank God.